God's love. Elevating, energizing, empowering. Miracles happen when you know that you are loved. Peter Youngren has communicated God's love with millions from every religion and culture. Get ready for your ultimate life because you are loved. Welcome to our telecast today. Uh, I'm going to be teaching, uh, but, but first I want to tell you, we, we are on a campaign here. We, we want to put the gospel into the hands of one million people here in our country this year. And uh, I want to ask you to help me with that. You know, I think many people who themselves have received Christ, who are trusting in Jesus Christ, do instinctively have a desire to, to share that gospel with others. But sometimes we don't know how. We don't even know how to open the conversation. And sometimes we look at the material that is available to us and we say, I don't, I don't want to share that with my friend. You know, so I, I don't want to share this uh, gospel publication because some of it is pretty negative and condemning. And, and we remember Jesus' words when he said, I didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. And, and so all of that as, as a backdrop. Now, in a, a little bit later on in our program, uh, Pastor Nathan Thurber is going to be joining with me, and I'm so glad for that because he's an integral part of this because it was through he and I talking together, and he encouraged me, and he said, Peter, put down as succinctly as you can the gospel facts and truths that you share that cause these huge salvation calls where, where uh, when I'm, I'm a Buddhist or, or a Muslim, 90% of the crowd will respond. And so I did. We worked on it very hard, and out of that came this enlightenment tract. Hey, uh, can you get a close-up of that? It looks very small. It's actually 44 pages, and it, it really presents the gospel and the global quest for God. It's a title, full title, of it. it's Enlightenment, the Global Quest for God. You can probably see that on the screen there. And where we show people that, that Jesus satisfies that deepest longing uh, that people have for God to know, why am I here? Why was I born? Where, where am I going? So all that to say, now we are in the One Million Campaign. I call this the Light of the World Campaign. We want to put this into one million people's hands this year. So this booklet, I want to ask you to get a hold of this. Here's a package of 50 that's available for $25. And basically the cost here is the shipping. You know, <laughs> half of the cost is the shipping because, um, and, and here's for 100 of them, you get for 40 and then you get 200 for $60. So you see all that, that. Now, if you want to order more than that, and I'm sure uh, Nathan, when he comes on the program, will, will remind us, we had, I think one person ordered 25,000. But of course, we, then we'd not worry about the shipping cost. But uh, uh, we want you to get a hold of this and have it in your home. Have it when you go on the bus, when you go on the subway. Leave it in the coffee shop. Include, include it when you send out a, a, a Christmas card. Well, we, you know, we're not in the Christmas season now, but a birthday card or, or some card to somebody or a gift to someone. And this is a powerful tract to present the gospel in 44 pages, enlightenment. And see, I'm using a different terminology also because really uh, the way that uh, Jesus described the problem was that people's minds had been darkened and, and he brought true enlightenment. So we want to ask you, the information is there. It's also on our website, how you can order this. You could start by ordering 50 and, uh, but, but I would say go for 200 right away and then spread them around in your neighborhood. Now, I want to continue our theme of this week, which is three powerful life-changing decisions. Romans 1, 14 to 16, and, and this relates to what I'm talking about when I'm talking about giving the gospel to our country. Here's what Paul said. He said, I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to unwise. So as, as much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Three remarkable decisions are found in this scripture. 
the Apostle Paul, who had such an infamous beginning of his life, filled with hatred, driven by religious hatred. Uh, he even wanted to murder people. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You know, if, if everyone who has come to faith in Christ would decide, that's my overriding motivation, I, I'm going to be unashamed of the gospel. You know, we could change our country. We could change our world. Sometimes we talk about maybe if you come from a church and you like your church, you say, I'm so proud of my church. Well, that's nice. I like when people say here in Toronto, I'm proud of Toronto International Celebration Church. But what I like even more is when people say, I'm proud of the gospel. See, sometimes we are more busy defending Christianity and Christian values than we are excited about the gospel. I know to some people now, you know, it's a big deal whether you say Happy Holidays or, or, or Merry Christmas, for example. And, and it is a big deal. But, but friend, uh, just, just to say Merry Christmas is not the same thing as presenting the gospel. Others, uh, they, they get all caught up in, in, in issues, you know, in the United States. Our friends there, they've had this uh, discussion about whether a, a Christian baker should have to sell a, a, a wedding cake to a gay couple and we, we fight and fight and fight and we think we're standing up for the gospel. That's not standing up for the gospel. Maybe you can make an argument that you're standing up for Christian values or Christian tradition, but the gospel is the good news. And Paul doesn't say, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of Christian traditions. He doesn't say that. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Uh, I, I'm not ashamed of this, uh, of this beautiful, liberating good news. See, see we, we got to keep a firewall between the religion of Christianity and gospel. For example, even, you know, you hear a lot of talk about a Christian nation. We need a Christian nation. Do you know that that expression comes from Islam? In the first eight centuries of Christianity, you never hear any of the church fathers talking about having a Christian nation. But once Islam comes and Muslims begin to talk about an Islamic nation, then Christians say, well, hey, if they're going to have an Islamic nation, we should have a Christian nation. So sometimes we have a lot of baggage added on. I submit for those first eight centuries, the greater concern was the gospel, the good news of people, individuals becoming Christians rather than nations. See, sometimes we have the same dilemma that you find that, that the people of Israel had when they said, we want a king. And God says, I don't want you to have a king. And they said, we want a king anyhow. And then God said, okay, you can have Saul then. It's not going to be good for you, but Saul will be your king. Let's not be like that. Let's not be so concerned about our Christian values and we have to have the same rights as everybody else. And if this group in society has this right, we want to be that. We want to have that way. If they have a king, we'll have a king. Let's be following the Apostle Paul who says, follow me as I follow Christ and say, the gospel is what matters. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Of Christ, he says, the gospel of Christ. You know, over in the city of Corinth in the Bible, they had favorites among the preachers. I say that when Simon Peter came to Corinth, then all the blue collar workers came out. And when Paul came to preach, uh, the intellectuals came. And when Apollos that came the artistic types who were enthralled by smooth oratory. Then they came. But then Paul corrected. He said, it's not me or Apollos or Simon Peter. Church is not about a preacher. It's about Jesus Christ. And that's what we are doing on this telecast. We're saying it is all about Jesus Christ and his gospel. And, and if I step on your toes and if I offend you by pointing out some of the excessive concerns we have about Christian values, and maybe you've had that kind of concern. Don't be offended. I just try to draw us back to the central point. Why do we want to communicate the gospel? We already have uh, very close to 500, probably by the time this you watch this, 500,000 of this in print. We want to put this into the hands of one million people in our country. Why? Because we have something of infinite value that others don't have. Does that sound proud when I say that? Does that sound egotistical? 
Let me say it again. We, ha we have something of infinite value that others don't have. People say, well, everybody has their religion. And, and I understand that sounds very nice and logical, but I just say to you as, as humbly as I can, when we found Jesus or Jesus found us and his gospel was revealed, there was something of tremendous value we received. The fact that Jesus Christ has on humanity's behalf taken all sin and shame and put it away. You know, Jesus, to put it bluntly, put religion out of business. Religion is about making people feel guilty. Religion is about making God look sinister and judgmental and vengeful and angry. But Jesus put all that out of business. And he, and he says, God's not like that. If you want to know what God is like, look at me. See, w w what we have when we have the gospel is we have the key to everyone's best life now and forever. <laughs> it's a wonderful life. Come to Jesus. Receive his new life. Receive the forgiveness of sin. You, you don't have to struggle. If you're a religious person, you don't have to struggle with the idea of a displeased, angry deity. Because if you're struggling with that, you're not having a very peaceful life. You're stressed out. A lot of people who go to church are stressed out, wondering if they're good enough for God to be pleased with them. When we discover the gospel, we enter into the peaceful life and we say, I, 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 just like Jesus was the beloved of the Father, so I'm the beloved of the Father too. And if you're not a believer, if you say, I don't know what to believe, I'm not a Christian, I'm not tied up in religion, I'm not hooked on religion, yes, but I'll tell you something about you. You were created, you came into this world with a longing to be loved and to love. Why? Because the one who created you is love. So naturally, it rubbed off on you. That's why every human being longs to be loved. And when you discover your mind is enlightened, you discover the gospel, you begin to live under that umbrella of God's love. Here's another key. We must not keep to ourselves what we have. Jesus instructed otherwise. You know, you can read the gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts. Jesus said, you know, go and make disciples of all nations, preach to every creature. He said it's necessary for Jesus to suffer and die and rise again uh, so that the whole world will hear it. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. It's God's plan that we would give the gospel to everyone. You remember the story in the Bible about the four lepers who, who received such abundance and they were eating and drinking and then it struck them. We can't keep this to ourselves. We got to share it with others. That's, that's, why, that, that's why we say to you, would you get, 200, get the 200 pack of this little tract, Enlightenment, the global quest for God, which will lead people to a discovery of God's love through Jesus Christ, will lead people to salvation through Jesus. You see, spiritual growth is good. But one of the principal purposes for spiritual growth is to equip us to multiply. Jesus said, I have ordained you that you would go and bring forth fruit. One of the main purposes for, for financial blessing and giving money to the gospel is to enable gospelization of the world. You know, money is not just a gift to church, to pay the hydro and, and, and to keep the pastor happy and have nice staff and all that, that's okay. But actually, the, the New Testament doesn't talk a lot about that. What the New Testament talks about is money for the gospel. Paul is the main money collector in the New Testament. What did he collect it for? To be able to share the gospel, to go to the next region so that none would perish. So, so when we talk about financial release, we're talking about for the sake of the gospel. This is now, you know, God has given us so much success around the world. We've seen great success among Buddhist friends, Muslim friends, Hindu friends, in countries where there are Christians who yet haven't discovered Christ. We want to see this right here in our own country. 
I'm calling on every Canadian friend right now from coast to coast, from Newfoundland uh, to, to British Columbia, to Vancouver Island out there, and all the way up to Labrador and Northwest Territories and all across the southern uh, border uh, of Canada. Then I'm calling on my friends in the United States. Would you help us to put this gospel presentation into the hands of one million people? 44 pages. And, and, and it's, it's very concise, and there's some illustrations and pictures. You can see how that goes. And we, we, we lead people to a revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, I, I, I hope you see this. And, and that's why finances are released. You know, just like in the Bible, the people of Israel receive finances to build the tabernacle, build the temple. Well, we receive finances to build a temple of living stones. Oh, this will get our, our mind focused right. You know, I'm, I see my good friend and college, uh, colleague, uh, Pastor Nathan Thurber, is, is just off the side. He said, come and join me on the set. I'll keep uh, talking, Nathan, and then I'll go to you very quickly. You know, sometimes we are so caught up in so many things, conspiracy theories and prophecies. I don't know what they mean. Uh, friends, let's get back to this basic. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sometimes, you know, we could feel ashamed because some things that are really stupid are done in the name of Christianity. I think of what has been done in the name of Christianity to the native population of Canada uh, and, and, and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau a few months ago, apologized. Maybe he was crying. He was, uh, maybe you see it on the screen there. Maybe the producer put that up. And a few years before that, 2014, I think it was, uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper issued a similar apology. It doesn't make him very proud to be a Christian. And I understand, and in, in, in across the, uh, the Native Canadian communities that people are saying, I don't want this Christianity. It took us away from our families. It destroyed our culture. It led it to, to so many kids experience sexual abuse. Friends, what is the answer for this? It is a humble presentation of the good news. Stop pushing Christian traditions and westernized Christian ways of doing things, and let's get back to the gospel. And that's what this little booklet is all about. Enlightenment, the global quest for God. So we, we want to, I mean, to get it. I think right now our producer has it on the screen. 200 of uh, these will, and most of that is the shipping cost because it's a little heavy, uh, $60. And I think uh, you can order 100 and you can see how the price goes up the less you order. And that's all because of the shipping. We, we checked with the, with the post office. And so we know we, we want to cover our expenses, basically. That's all. And if you want to order several thousand, and some are doing that, then, of course, call us and contact us. And, and in fact, uh, Pastor Nathan, maybe you could be the one who could talk to that person. By the I way, could. thank you for joining the set. Well, thank you for having me. Good to be here. I, I saw you off the coming off this. I thought, well, just let's listening not have off a, to the side. Let's not have a, you know some formal break in the program. You just join in your your family here for the for the TV viewers. And so you've heard me sit and talk, uh, partly about the scripture in Romans one, which where Paul talks about his decision to be unashamed about the gospel. And then you've been involved with the production of this. And so uh, I'm going to just be quiet and let you talk for a bit. Well, Pastor Peter, thank you for writing it. Uh, you know, you mentioned a lady who, who, I th who printed around 25,000. Yeah, yeah. She kept coming. You know, this lady's been involved with our ministry for some time. And she's been in the track ministry, giving tracks out to people. Uh, and, and yet the tracks she'd bring us, I don't know if I would want to get, you know, it was, they were very condemning. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then just thinking about this last night, you know, I was reading to my young son, seven months old, but I was reading him these little baby Bibles, and, and I couldn't believe what they were teaching my young son in the baby Bible, was teaching him that, you know, only the good people go to heaven. I thought, oh my goodness. Anyhow, this, this track is so valuable. But, you know, it occurred to me, you know, the Christian life very, is really quite simple, uh, I think. Uh, number one, cast your cares on God. And that, that deals with everything that involves our, my life. 
But then secondly, care for others. Cast our cares on God, but then care for others. And this has to do with caring for others, this book, and giving it to other people. And, but one thing that also occurred to me is that when we are caring for others, we're refreshed ourselves. And, yeah, and this yeah. lady who printed 25,000 already of these books that you mentioned earlier, she's, she's 80 plus, she's 82 years old. She has more, she could run circles around most people that I yeah, know. I know, More I know. energy. Uh, and so there, there's a great energy released in caring for others. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but people need Jesus. The ultimate reason why I believe why you did this is could because, not just be, not only because, we need a clear gospel presentation with these booklets do, but people need Jesus. And, and Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Well, how could we be ashamed when the gospel is which, that which brings freedom to people? And, um, and, and I love what the book, when you open up in the booklet, it says, we were made for love. And, and I so agree, when we are connected to God who is love, it's like the fuel that energizes us to live, uh, to live empowered by victory. And, uh, and people need that. People, you know, uh, we, this booklet is not about beating people over the head who, who live maybe a bad lifestyle, which is so common in sharing Jesus. They're living a bad, so change, change. That's not it at all. But we believe when you're connected to love, your life changes. And, and bad lifestyles, if, that's, if you want to talk about that, they, they don't pay well. They don't pay well. Uh, obviously, um, let's talk lust. Proverbs talks, you know, lust is never satisfied. If you want to live an unsatisfied life, then give yourself over to that kind of lifestyle. And so love empowers people to live victorious, yes, but not by beating people over the head. This is a, a powerful book that I would encourage everyone to get it by, as you say, by thousands. Give it to your, people, your friends so you can start a, yeah. a ministry. I, when I'm on the bus, I always leave it there for people to pick up. In fact, one of my coworkers the other day was on a bus, another bus and, and found one of the booklets. And so she came to me and said, was that you? I found out the bus number. It wasn't me. Obviously, someone else uh, has well, caught the vision. Keep talking about leaving but wherever it on the bus. we go, I was talking to the lady yesterday, today actually, and she doesn't know I was going to be on the program. Uh, the lady who who who, who, is, who printed twenty five thousand of these herself, mm -hmm. and she was just at the mall yesterday getting her oil changed and struck up a conversation with a gentleman there and gave him the gave him the booklet. She's given this out every day. It's very very easy to do, whether it be personally or just leaving it at a coffee shop. Uh, uh, but I think that's. You know, next to casting our own cares on Jesus, which when we cast our cares, you know, healing flows. We teach that every, teach that every week uh, or every day. But, but, but beyond casting our cares, then what? Well, caring for others. And, and this is a great tool uh, to help uh, us all across Canada to, to help people yeah. discover God's love. And, and I think one of the, you alluded to that earlier, you, you showed me some of the gospel tracts that are being used, booklets like this. May, they're usually not 44 pages like ours, but maybe 20 pages. And, he said, read these, you said to me. So I, I, I took them home and I read them and I realized, I'm thinking of one of them in particular now, where the, where the message basically was, number one, you belong to the devil. Two, you're one heartbeat from hell. Three, pray this prayer now. And four, try to live by the Ten Commandments afterwards. Now, now someone says, well, you know, somebody received Christ when they received that. Well, I'm not saying that there's no response, but I think of all the collateral damage. You know, is that really our message? And what makes that the wrong message is, is because it wasn't Jesus' message. It wasn't the apostles' message. Jesus mentioned hell and Gehenna in the context of religious people. <laughs> you never have Jesus threatening a prostitute with Gehenna. He, he was just, you know, we made it, <laughs> we've turned everything the wrong side, you, you know. And so I saw that, I said, I would be ashamed to give that out. That think that we have to bully people, we have to kind of, you know, force them in a corner and kind of make them say a prayer quickly. What we have, friends, is so awesome. It's this, ah, what a message we have, the gospel. We don't need to bully people into it. And this just lovingly, uh, leads people to discovery of who God is. And I think the cover is, 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 is important because we live in a multicultural society. Uh, uh, many people you talk to are, you know, have friends uh, from different religious backgrounds. Uh, and maybe 30 years ago, that wasn't the case so much. We were more isolated in our mm -hmm. own communities. This, this is a cover that I believe, and you'll see it on the screen, uh, it speaks to all people of different, of different religions. And people of different religions are not bad. They're all seeking something. They're seeking yeah, yeah. God. 
God uh, in maybe not the, anyhow. So this, that, it's, a, it's a book that breaks down those barriers because there's many different symbols of religion on the front. I, I'm going to ask our producer to put that, uh, cover the whole screen for just a second with that cover. And you see these, think about Canada. 22% of Canadians are born outside of Canada. 14% of Americans are born outside of America. We have the world and all its religions living here. So you see how they are depicted there. Now you can go back to me now, Mr. Producer. Uh, and, and so we're not speaking against any of these. We're lifting up Jesus. That's the same way we do it all around the world. We have no time to tear down other religions. We have no, no time to wag our finger at people and, and condemn what they're doing. What we have is so beautiful that, that if you let this flower of the gospel bloom, it will bloom so beautiful. Uh, we don't need to tear anything else down, but when we lift up Jesus, something happens. So um, again, Nathan, how, how can people uh, order this? I know you can do it online, but online. if somebody wants to have a thousand, if they want to phone spread the, it. Phone the number on the screen and let, just let the, whether it's the message or the operator know and we'll call them back. Yeah, that's but, right. But you know, people are always asking, because they hear you go to Buddhist countries and Muslim countries yeah, and yeah. Hindu countries, they're always asking, how do I share Jesus with, you know, because they're, you yeah, know, you yeah. talk across Western Canada or even here in yeah. Central Canada or wherever they are, people are saying, you know, I'm, I'm meeting people from, from different countries. They're maybe Islamic or they're Hindu or they're Buddhist. How do I share the gospel? This is a very powerful opportunity. This track will help them. Uh, you know, I, I have a little dream here now. Can I share it with you? First time I ever share this. Now, we're saying now we want a million of this within the first 12 months. But really, even if we got one out, that's worth it. So it's not like we have to have a million or this is not a success. No, if we give away to half a million or 5,000, that's a success. But I really have a dream that, you know, in about 10 months from now, I'll have to sit down here with you on the set and say, oh, we've already bypassed that. We are at a million and a half. We want to put the gospel, and this is really Bible-based. There's lots of scripture verses in there, but I just lead people to Jesus using the Bible and then just sharing some principles along the way and with some illustrations. So let's help to give the gospel to our country. Buy a package, put them at your church, let other of your church members take them themselves. You know, that's another way to empower others who may not be watching this Absolutely. program. Absolutely. And many people, we would like to do it, but, but we just need a tool that we're not ashamed of putting in somebody's hand. And I think you'll say you don't have to be ashamed to feel like you're giving some condemnation to people or that you're coming on a high horse, putting others down. You're just sharing the light. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the Light of the World Project, we, we are really going full ahead with it. We have over 500,000 in print, and uh, we, we, we hope to up that, and it's starting to be distributed now, so it's really getting going. So contact us there and say, I want to order uh, 200 of that. I want to order, um, no, that, that would or be, 365, that's 100. One a day. This is 100, yeah, or 365, or this is 50 of them. Or maybe you want to order a thousand for that call for an, a special price. But you see all the information there, and uh, you know we've run out of time, Nathan. But we do all this why? why? Because the love of Christ compels us. It's, it's not because we are so sweet or beautiful in ourselves, but God's love compels us, and you are loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1, or P.O. Box 2108, Vista, California, 92085-2108. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.